Okay, so Mackenzie Jones uh, is here with us today from the Worker Place and Tribe Works, uh, and she's going to tell us just a little bit briefly about her worker co-op and herself. Yeah. yeah, thank you. So I'm someone that's been part of the worker co-op movement for a long time. I'm really invested in worker ownership and building the solidarity economy, and that's one of the reasons that I founded the Worker Place. Um, that stands for the um, Worker Ownership Resources, Knowledge, and Education for Pro-Labor and Anti-Capitalist Economics. Um, and through the Worker Place, I support co-ops in their startup journey or conversion journey. Um, I'm particularly interested in helping co-ops develop their decision-making structure, their bylaws, um, how to develop policies, especially around accountability and grievances. Um, those are all things that I feel really passionate about, and I love to do that work with the Worker Place, and I've been able to support tons of different types of co-ops. Um, Tribe Works is another cooperative where I um, direct a very small team and our goal is to provide employment support to freelancers. And how, part of how we do that is by um, aggregating 1099 contract work as W-2 employment for individuals. Um, and the details of it, I'm, I'd be happy to share if folks have questions or want to talk to me more about it, um, but essentially, we're really we're working to use the systems that exist, like payroll and healthcare benefits and things like this, that are usually unavailable to freelance creative workers, and make them available to them through our cooperative model. And TribeWorks is part of a larger co-op that you may or may not have heard of called Obron Cooperative. Obron's mission is to put the engines of business to work for humanity, and it does that by acquiring small businesses and then providing shared resources to those businesses from a centralized location. And one of those resources that's offered to those businesses is worker ownership for all of the employees. So can you uh, talk a little bit more about uh, Obron and, uh, and, and and how that worked specifically with TribeWorks? Was it a uh, like a sole proprietorship or something uh, before they got involved? Um, TribeWorks and Obron were founded by the same group of people. Um, and Obron is actually in the business of acquiring other businesses, but TribeWorks is the one business within Obron that was built um, okay. by Obron members. Right. Um, and so Obron supports particular industries, and those industries mainly right now are healthcare and logistics and the arts. So TribeWorks is the business that represents the arts, and we are providing employment services mostly to individual, you know, creative workers, freelance artists. Um, Obron has acquired home health care businesses and logistics businesses and offers, you know, like unified human resources and accounting and bookkeeping, um, legal support, stuff like that, payroll and benefits administration. We take a lot of that back office stuff off of the hands of the business to allow the business the workers to focus a little bit more on the product or the service that they're trying to deliver to their customers and community. Um, and as part of that, any anyone who becomes part of the Obron network, whether through an acquisition or they work with TribeWorks, um, they have the ability to be a member. They can opt into membership. Obron Cooperative is a worker-owned cooperative. And so everyone who's part of the co-op can become a member um, and so there's a very diverse and broad and big network of member owners um, throughout the country. Yeah. Um, and it's, as far as we know, the first of its kind, really, a cooperative conglomerate. Um, it's, it's a unique social and economic project. And we've seen success for a lot of those workers at those small businesses getting raises or getting access to better health insurance, um, professional development opportunities, stuff like that. And uh, have there been any successful co-op conversions that have come out of this uh, so far? We don't convert people. The, the conversion happens to, at the acquisition. So when Obron acquires a business or purchases a business, it becomes part Perfect. of the co-op. So I guess I should say, have you successfully converted any businesses into worker managed firms? You know what I'm saying? Uh, maybe I get your question. Um, so let's use an example of like a home healthcare business that Obron acquired. They yeah. were privately owned. 
Obron bought the business and now all of the workers in that business are part of the co-op and many of them have um, opted into membership. They still have a similar management structure in many cases. They have more resources through like the health leadership at Obron. Um, they okay. are they are worker managed in that like the the sole owner is no longer the sole owner and the managers at mm. that business are now all they have the option mm. of being owners. Mm -hmm. um, in mm -hmm. many cases, the businesses don't change too much, which is kind of like a comfortable space to be after an acquisition. Um, but we're not converting individual businesses to worker ownership. We're um, bringing them into right. You know, yes. A yeah, I see. I've. It's interesting. I. I, I mean. Uh, yeah. I. I, I it used the home healthcare. I've worked in in, in home healthcare a good bit actually um but what i would really like to do and i'm still kind of you know hoping this comes along someday is have a uh a, a, like a a home health care co-op like worker mm -hmm. and and um client you know mm. with worker and client members like kind of eco village style or something cool. um, and i live in rural montana where you know we can kind of envision this we got the space and whatnot, and plenty of old folks um, and and people who do care work uh, that's greatly underpaid, um, but always you know the big uh, one of the you know the, the big draws for me in any cooperative stuff, but especially in the healthcare field was uh, the the worker ownership and not having to have some you know the manager telling you what to do and what not to do and all this kind of yeah. stuff. Mm -hmm. um, so yeah, no, that's. Uh, but it's healthcare is a huge field and very hard to to make much difference in. And even with a lot of our our worker co-ops, our home healthcare worker co-ops mm -hmm. that we've got a number of now, you know, you'd sit on in on their webinars and they say, this, you know, it's like we can only do so much in terms of pay and whatnot. It's mm -hmm. like you know we can mm -hmm. you know, we can make the culture a lot better, but um, right. you know, there are certain restrictions due to Medicare and whatnot. That exactly, just... yeah. There are a lot of systems outside of our control that we can manipulate as much as possible, but there are limitations. The biggest worker-owned cooperative in the United States is Cooperative Home Care Association. Yeah. So, yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. Um, yeah, and and again, you know, it's uh, you know uh, other models, and, and I. I tend to be fairly uh, like radically egalitarian in my outlook and a lot of things and, and, and just the jobs that I've worked, you know, lots of manual labor and stuff, mm -hmm. um, uh, you know, despite having a college degree that have really made me, um, you know, <laughs> one, gain a lot of respect for people who work manual labor jobs and yeah. two, kind of it, it, not really value all that much having a college degree, <laughs> um, but uh, you know, but, uh yeah nonetheless it's um uh, yeah i don't know where i'm going with this um actually i'm losing my train of thought here but um so yeah well it's, uh, so i guess what i want to say is healthcare is is huge it's hard to make inroads in and so even though like orban's model i'm listening to you describe it and i'm going like if 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 if, if i was one of the workers like how excited would i be I'm like yeah Better, it's a fair I mean, question. It's better, yeah, yeah. better yeah. right? And anything that's that's better is it's like even you know I can hope for like a a thousand uh, you know egalitarian worker co-op home healthcare firms and we could get them all and we would still need more you know more things going on than just that. So, mm -hmm. so yeah, um, it's a big lot, the, indus the industry the industry right? the industry is problematic for sure. Yes, yes, as a whole. And, and we need lots of different models. I guess that's what I'm saying. It's like, yeah. even though, you know, I might be a little like, oh, huh, interesting. I don't know if it's quite my thing, but it's still like, hey, it's uh, it's doing something different and, and right. moving ahead. So, um, uh, and and the worker place, did you want to talk about all about that? Um, I think, yeah, I think yeah. I said what I wanted to say about it, mostly that it's just a co-op consulting organization and I work as a peer advisor with the US Federation of Worker Cooperatives sometimes and they are able to offer technical assistance at sometimes very discounted or grant funded rates which I think is great for members of the federation um but yeah the worker place is just my own personal commitment to supporting supporting co-ops supporting the movement being a being a helping hand when co-ops need it great great um well you've definitely been a help uh 
<laughs> for us. Uh, Chris, mm -hmm. did you want to chime in? Oh yeah. So for for tribe works, yeah. Um, is I kind of I feel like I see the artists whom I know. I, I feel like a lot of times they don't want to be artists because um, it kind of they feel like they sell they're selling themselves to like the wrong people. Mm. Um, does does any aspect of like tribe works? help people who are kind of like in these predicaments like to be able to maybe do more like value and practice online work as an artist i don't know this is anything to mind yeah that's a good question one of the things that we really prioritize is building community among our artists mm -hmm. and also arts organizations that are hiring artists um and so these conversations and conversations like this are often on the table and um we try to offer a lot of professional development or just like opportunities for artists. And so, um, I mean, really the support that we provide first and foremost is like the structure of employment, which is, which can be life changing for a freelancer to mm -hmm. be quite frank. Um, people can get mortgages and health insurance for the first time in their lives because they've got paychecks. They're already earning their income, um, but they're earning it in a way that doesn't really uh, like support the things that they need in their lives um, or like through mechanisms that are accessible to them. So that's really what we focus on. I think, you know, through helping artists to build their network just by providing access to more people who are part of our network is uh, maybe one way that we're indirectly addressing your, your question. Definitely we're a values, a lot, you know, values forward organization and, um, hope to connect people to other values forward people and organizations. I think, yeah, it sounds like TriWorks definitely does meet, meet that need and, and that concern. Um, especially if like people can share experiences like, Hey, have you worked with this person? What are they up to? Mm -hmm. um, but it also seems like a good way to help um, people who are kind of like trying to do artwork on the side and they mm -hmm. want to like, make that transition to full time but mm -hmm. like how do you do that when you're kind of burned out already doing mm -hmm. you know your your like your main income um that's not mm -hmm. art and then you want to transition to yeah that's I'm really glad to come across this I I want to share with some folks yeah please um, do please do mm -hmm. cuz yeah, I don't know anything about the whole art world, but I, I I do know um some really good people who do art and they 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 want to do more of it. It's just there's like these complex things to navigate that like I I will never be able to like help them out. You know, it's got to be like other artists that can help them navigate mm -hmm. that stuff. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. I mean, everybody wants to. I mean, you want to be an artist, not uh you know, be an accountant or be a, a marketing <laughs> guy or something, right? Mm -hmm. Administrative person, like, mm -hmm. so yeah, this, you know, kind of shared services, <laughs> shared services co-op, Mackenzie, is that maybe how, have, have you ever used that term? I know that's something that um, Jim John talked about a lot, this concept. Yeah, I, yeah, um, yes. Yeah, I think that's one way of saying it. Or we also refer to ourselves as an employer of record or similar to a professional employment organization. We take on a lot of the administrative and like uh, duties and liability of employment so that artists and arts organizations can focus on their craft mm -hmm. and focus on their mission. Okay, um, so yeah, it's even a little deeper. Oh.